Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Brendan Isaiah Bankston. Everybody doing? Good, hopefully. Today, we are continuing on with Jagatai Khan collectible sculpt. Uh, let's. Here's where we're at currently. I am using my mic today and I don't have my headphones. <clears throat> I don't know if the audio is. All right. Um, Jagatai Khan. This is um, one of the Primarchs from Warhammer 40,000. We are uh, doing a uh, yeah collectible sculpt of this guy. So um, they give you a, about the size that I'm thinking. Probably maybe even just a, a little bit bigger than this. I'm thinking maybe like foot tall, twelve inches, something like that. Um, maybe something like this, about yay tall. Uh, but this is what we've got uh, so far. Uh, we started this one over on the Stylus League stream about a month or so ago. Um, and we're still in the lockout. I haven't really been doing much on this guy uh, outside of stream. So that's where we're at. Um, if you'd like to go back and find some of the beginning ones of this one, you can go to the Stylus League website put in here hey this what's up diego what's up charbel how you doing from peru hey how are you hello back from california good old san jose um, so yeah, if you want to go back and, uh, see the initial blockouts, uh, they are there with the Stylus League, uh, on their website, so just search for their YouTube, I think it has it. Um, but now we've been picking it up and running with this on, um, the Pixelogic channel. So, this is that. desktop <clears throat> all right so um got the uh, i'm not crazy about the pose <coughs> i think it's okay i don't think it's super strong but uh we're going to start dialing in some secondary details on some of his armor pieces i may play with the pose a little bit offline See if we can get something a little bit more um super duper solid but for now, this is what we're going to work with. So I think we're going to start doing some just some basic details on his uh, pauldrons here. These guys. Um, and we'll be able to move, the, if we do move uh, the pose around, we can move those uh, quite easily. Let's go ahead and let's duplicate these off. And what I want to do is I want to sculpt both sides at the same time. So I'm going to set this back up in um do I have oh, that's not that's weird. Switch stage keeps going over and over again. there any way to adjust the camera rotation around the object more evenly? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. You like that? All right, so we're going to take this one. 
And we are going to try to get it back. Oh, you know what? Is it? I think it actually may be in Cemetery. Um, Comics Legend, what's up, man? Uh, how would you go about starting to create and sell minis? <clears throat> I know you work full time and create minis in your free time. Have you consider making minis full time? Um, I have thought about it a little bit, but my my career normal day job is a video game character artist. I've put uh, a lot of time and energy into that side of the artistic career. Um, so I, I probably will keep that <clears throat> and will um, we'll keep doing that for my full-time job. Okay, so let's try to get these guys um, set so that I can sculpt this side and this side at the same time. Now, it may not be exactly straight, I think. Um, but, comics to your question, uh, how would you how would you do it full time? I think. Um, oh, look, they're different. Hmm. Um, I would start by getting good at sculpting. That's actually the way I would start. Make sure that. Um, you have some good quality pieces. And you may want to, um, <clears throat> you may actually want to see if, uh, I think there's two different sides to it. One is running an actual business for creating and selling minis, and the other is <coughs> the art of creating the minis. I think running both of those at the same time is, is tough. Um, I guess it really depends on how good you are at sculpting in general. Do, let's just delete that one. Work on this one. The idea that I'm trying to do here is if we activate symmetry in the Z? Yeah, the Z axis. What I want to do, maybe local symmetry is better. Yeah. I want to be able to do this basically. Just want to kind of sculpt on one side and it actually sculpt on the other side. Um, so if you are kind of new to sculpting uh, and you need to kind of get good and you're interested in doing more of the sculpting side of things, um, I would say kind of get good at sculpting first um, and then you know, maybe, maybe, oh, so let's say if you're concentrating on, on getting good at sculpting um, and you want to do minis, maybe what you can do is you can get yourself aligned with uh, a business who is already doing minis um, and have lots of work uh, and then do minis for them for a little while and kind of get used to how the production goes. So, you know, uh, what does the models look like? You know, you get good at posing, you get as good at sculpting, you get good at um, keying and setting up for production and those types of things. Um, then once you feel comfortable doing that and you can produce a lot of things, uh, then maybe strike out on your own and uh, do a little bit more of the business side of things. Yeah, so this, I think this... back well, what's up Sidham and you and I how you doing how you doing uh, so let's bring this in just touch I want to have a, a plane shift happen here so that when we look at it we can we can get some nice light bouncing um, it looks more kind of like a blade, and then we'll have some sculptural stuff in here. Get 
get nice of a curve here. Um, I think there's uh, some really good companies out there right now that are making great quality minis kind of on a monthly <coughs> um, a monthly cadence, you know? Um, so whatever you end up doing, it's you either got to be competing with that or doing something different from that. Um, it seems like the more... Uh, popular version is to run a Patreon and do, you know, 10 bucks a month and you get, you know, a certain amount of minis per month, ranging from large minis to, to smaller NPC minis. Um, so if, if, you know, if, if that's something that you're interested in, I think the problem with running that type of business, though, is that you're really, you're beholden to make sure that you have content every single month. In order to keep your Patreons. That I think is a, a pretty big commitment. So, um, you know, if you're going to be competitive, uh, then that's kind of where the industry is at at the moment. Unless you end up doing, you know, you come up with a different idea uh, that's competitive to that. If we can get maybe just some but in in my case what i'm doing is um i'm trying to do a little bit more of the collectible size so something um you know along the lines of of this size so you know sideshow collectibles um prime one studio those types of things something like that is um Kind of the direction that I want to go. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem. But you know, I think there's there there's still a uh, a lot to give back in the in, in that part of the industry. You know. Oh, that, yeah, that one wasn't mine. Uh, that was um, from, <coughs> excuse me, from McFarland Toys. Uh, but if you want, um, so the other side of uh, Clinkerbuilt Studio is uh, painting minis sell. So if you want to take a look at some of the paint um, painting that we've done, you can take a look at www.clinkerbuilt studio.com take a look at our website and uh, see some of the current work that we have actually you know what I'm going to show you something here we'll give you a quick, quick look at some of the stuff um, so we have a on our cover image um, we have a Belisarius call that uh, painted up this is a Warhammer 40,000 model but that's one of our paint jobs. Um, this guy uh, we just finished up. He's pretty cool. This is um, Break a Boss, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Pretty cool. That one had fun. Um, T-Phone says... <coughs> well, what's the difference between a character modeler and a character artist? Um, in my opinion, those terms are interchangeable. Not really much, uh, much difference in, in those ones. Um, we have, uh, oh, thank you. I uh, just finished up a Mahler Fiend. That guy's pretty fun. But it's really interesting coming from a character, like a video game character artist point of view, and then trying to get more kind of realistic materials and textures and stuff, uh, like as a paint job yeah, on a physical object. It's been a lot of uh, a lot of fun and and challenge, a big challenge. <laughs> a lot of people want to do kind of like the um, <clears throat> non-metallic metal paint jobs and stuff, but I, I. Um, I definitely like having 
like the realistic you know as you turn the model in space you can see how the light plays off of it differently um so that's why I, I tend to go with a little bit more like the actual metal flake type paint jobs and not the um non-metallic metal paint jobs uh, more because i i just enjoy the presence of the model when you're actually looking at it on in the physical in the physical thank you guys let's i'll show you one more here. Uh, what else do we um, oh, the War Master Titan. This guy was a lot of fun. He's about, uh, he's about uh, eight inches tall, I think. So this is this will give you a, an idea of the size there. Uh, but this dude was a, a lot of fun to paint. Lots of fun. Lots of grime and streaking and a lot of fun stuff. And then we also. Um, Started playing around with um, magnetizing this. That one. Uh, the this guy was a lot of fun. The uh, the Vox, the no, Lord Discordant, X Machinator. Chinerator guy, bro, dude. Uh, but this, this guy was a lot of fun to paint too. So that this is um, kind of my my love for painting minis um, is kind of spawned this next version of what Clinkerbuilt Studio is is sculpting, building, and painting minis for people's uh, collections. So that's that's what I'm aiming to do uh, with this guy more as a collectible size. And then uh, we actually did uh, this one previously, which is a servitor skull. So uh, I'm working on the final details of this guy um, for 3D print. Um, and then from there, we'll actually um, uh, paint, paint this guy up. Uh, but my printer is actually coming. I actually ordered I ordered my first printer. Very, very excited. Thank you very much. Uh what's the name of the paint for that non metallic gray armor? Um that one was a, 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 a are you talking about the um Aristotle's or are you talking about the Mahler fiend? For the gray armor there? This guy. Um, this one was a. So it's a mix of a uh, black with um, kind of some uh, stone gray in the middle, uh, just to kind of like pull up the values in here. And then I actually went through with a uh, oil wash and uh, threw some of that uh, the oil wash into the recesses. And then used um, some mineral spirits to kind of pull out and dab off some of the um, uh, that black oil wash, so that you kind of get like this nice kind of grimy, um, lighter gray in there. Uh, so that's how I did that. So actually, similar to uh, like this grunging and stuff that we did on uh, on the gold here. So use a, dar a dark first and then paint up some like m more uh, lighter tones kind of in the middle, fade that off and then do an oil wash and use mineral spirits to kind of pull off uh, some of those areas. So that way the dark gets into the recesses and then you have some nice kind of like grungy um, roll off between the light and the dark. Uh, would you say that is impossible for making only minis for a living? No, I don't think it's impossible. Um, people are doing it right now. Um, I think that if you're good enough and your models are awesome and you have a good uh, a good business sense, you could definitely definitely make it work. I, it it's challenging and it will take some work for sure. Um, but yeah, it's definitely doable. See if we can just um, mask out some kind of like face. 
like the zygoma that kind of comes in here. Zygoma kind of comes in here. We've got piece that comes here, and then we've got maybe a nostril. A little bit. I think I need a little bit more geo in this guy. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's see if we can get some dynamo. Ooh, that's not enough. Uh, let's go five twelve, maybe. Um, also, if if you throw a question into chat and I don't see it, please feel free to throw it in back in chat. I always feel bad if I miss question. Sometimes I do. Human. Hello. <coughs> oh, you thought my cat said genius? <laughs> Genuine. Genuine. Um, and not as in the rapper. Ooh, that's old. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see if we can get some kind of cool. Things happening through here. I'm going to play with some some like bigger divots and smaller divots to kind of break up some of the um, what I'm trying to do is I'm thinking about uh, my lights and my darks and how big some of those lights and darks are so that when you're back here, your lights and darks will actually read. Um, so you're not just saying, oh, there's like a little shape that goes here. What I'm really doing is saying, okay, how much of this shade is here versus how much of the shade is here, All right? And you can really, once you start sculpting the light instead of sculpting a shape um i think you really like takes you to the to the next level um so think about that when you're you're blocking in this type of stuff right so like how um how deep uh you know is is this shadow in here versus you know the shadow that you're seeing here right is it is it short is it you know much darker, you know, do we want to kind of feather that shadow out a little bit by doing it like this? That was one of the things that took me quite a long time to, to really grasp, uh, was to not necessarily um, sculpt your shapes, but think about sculpting the shadows and the highlights, right? So um, I want to have kind of this nice the difference between like a, a tight deep shadow and then kind of this longer highlight that rolls over this right and that gives you this kind of nice even from back here it's able to be be red for mass production though do you create molds of your work or you just 3d print each one of them out um i think that's a it's a very the very big question that you, i have to ask yourself just in general of, of how you want to operate your business, right? Do you want to worry about um, sh mass producing uh, physical items um, and shipping and breakage and, you know, um, uh, stock production time and uh, those types of things? Personally, I'm, I, I, I much rather focus my little business right now on creating awesome sculpts because that's what I'm that's kind of like the thing I like doing and the thing I feel like I'm better at at the moment um so so what does that mean uh well that means that I probably don't want to mass produce these things say 
all right, if you don't want to mass produce these things, then um, maybe you can just go and sell these things digitally, right? And that then that helps you focus your business and say, okay, <clears throat> what I really want to do for the time, at least for the time being, is focus on um, people who would be interested in printing this on their own um, and handling the production for one-offs on, on their side kind of thing, right? So it makes more sense to me right now to do to focus on digital only content um because i'm i i don't feel like i want to take on those other business responsibilities you know what i mean so those types of decisions really help you focus on <clears throat> what and how uh what you're making how you're making it and how you're selling it right so if you're if you like the production side of things there's plenty of people like me who don't really get a lot out of that production side. So, you know, those types of partnerships are are out there for people like me who are like, nah, I just wanted to sculpt some cool. You know? <laughs> so really focusing on like what's it, what's your, what's at your core? You know, what are the what is the thing that you want to spend the most time doing and you're probably the best at? then focus on that and then if you if you have honed that to a point where your business makes um makes sense and it's actually uh doing well and proving itself to be a viable business uh then you can go from there right so let's say let's say i'm not really interested in um in doing physical production but maybe maybe something takes off and Somebody, you know, I, one of my models just goes absolutely nuts. And then now maybe I'll do a limited run of like producing them myself and selling physical ones for people who are outside of my initial market, which is the, the print your own kind of thing, right? So there's a lot of people out there that, who don't have their own printers and don't want to go through the hassle of printing and, and cleaning and, and doing all of that stuff. Maybe I can jump in at some point and say, okay, I'm going to make a hundred of these and then sell a hundred because I know the, that the physical ones are already selling. Uh, and the further market of that would be, you know, people that aren't actually printing or don't have a printer. Um, but that market is already established because, um, because of the, the traction that I've already gotten. So there's, there's things like that where you can, kind of branch out a little bit more and, and do and do those types of things. But I think the the biggest thing um that I can't overestimate um, or overstate is when you have an idea to start a business is to start small and prove that your business has um already not back okay over there has a market uh, prove that your business has a market and that you can sell the things that you're doing if you can sell them then broaden um, all of that uh, to to sell what you want, to sell more. This is not quite um, symmetrical back here. So what I'll have to do is, it's okay. I can get most of it um, from one side and then just fix some things on the other. That's okay. <coughs> uh, does age matter in the 3D industry? No, not really. Uh, the thing that matters the most is uh, how good you are at doing your craft. If you can make super dope stuff, uh, then age doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter. Um, I didn't get into the video game industry until I was 37, I think.
Uh, some of the things that I'm trying, so I'm, I'm trying to go a little bit um, abstract and um, shape on this one. So we'll have some things that are recognizable as as something, and other things that are are not. Um, the shadow sculpting is it just for rendering purposes? Uh, no, I, it, you know it, it's for shape read. So the thing that I always want to do is I want to make sure that the shapes are reading um, from different distances, right? So the important parts of this guy, uh, I need to identify uh, very early on so that I can make sure that those focal points are, um, are landing correctly. So in this particular case, um, you know, his head, his shoulder pad, probably this guy, and then the leg, right? This leg is probably a little bit more, going to be a little bit more prominent than this one, but those are my main, main focal points. Um, secondary focal points would obviously be something like, you know, this piece, this piece in here, uh, maybe this back piece in here. Um, but I want to make sure that those those identifying um, parts of him that make him him. Uh, are read really well. So I want to make sure that I have good um, good readability. <coughs> uh, do you think that doing your own unique designs and prints is a viable freelance path? Like a main side income type of thing. I think so, yeah. I, I think that you can, uh, you know, if, if your art is landing well and it's good and there's a, a market for it uh, and you can get some traction uh, as as a creator uh, yeah definitely there's definitely a market there, out there Um, uh, I need your suggestion. I'm 22, working 9 to 5, work from home, and also doing ZBrush course, but um, it's a hell of a pressure. I don't know what to do. So leave my job and learn and practice character. Um, I think that there is a important balance that you uh, that anybody should take between going for something and making sure that you have uh, stability in your life. Um, it's, it's, the, my initial response is, if you feel like you really want to do something and it's in your heart, find, then find a way to do it. Um, but don't, don't give up um, life, liberty, and you know, happiness, or you know, being able to eat. Um, or pay rent or support your um, your endeavors, right? Because if you can't support your initial endeavors, then it's it's very tough, even more tough to get get going, you know. Um, but if you have um, you know a, a decent income, or if you if you can support yourself, uh, you know, for a limited time, you know, do your own finances and say like. You know, if I took a year off of work, do do I have money? Um, what are my expenses? Can I take a year to or six months or whatever it's going to be, um, whatever much time that you think that you can afford to do, uh, and then just uh, just go for it. You know, but you want you want to definitely want to make sure that um, you can support yourself through that time. You know, we're not we're not on. We're not on this earth for very long. It's very important to be happy while you're here, you know. Uh, and if if your your current situation is something that you're not happy with, and you have something within your sights that you know you you feel like you'd be much happier doing, do it, man. Just, just do it responsibly so that you can survive through it. You know, it's doable. Look at all the people that are doing it. You know. Let's see if I can get this a little bit 
deeper in here. Um, the tablet I'm using, I'm just using a Intuos Pro, um, just a regular tablet. Uh, I've made my entire year, um, uh, my entire career on a tablet, not a Cintiq. So you could do it. You could do it too. So some of the other things that I that I learned that are really important um, when I was doing a lot of work on Iron Man helmets for Marvel's Avengers um, was uh, planeology and curveology. So looking at um, you know what is this plane doing versus this plane? Is this a straight plane? Uh, is this a straight plane? How much curvature does it actually have? Um, you know, there's a difference between saying like, oh, this is completely flat in here, like that. Or maybe it has a slight kind of curve to it so that the light, again, you're playing with the light and you're sculpting your light. You know, it has like this nice kind of cut that comes through here. So there's a radius on this um, this curve, but there's also a small radius on this plane that helps the light roll over it so it's not when you look at it it's not it's not one one reflection when it's flat but it has a life as you rotate it around and it kind of lives up here and then it kind of rolls over it but then you still have like this really cool separation of shadow right you see here where this shadow is kind of a plane shadow and then like this is this whole plane of light up here <laughs> what's up emperor how you doing um so if you look at uh like iron man uh helmets uh there's a lot of like this like yeah there's there's this um there's this definite divide uh between kind of these two shapes but there's also a life um, on the planes that divide those two things, right? And then you can play with different um, curvature on those planes and say, you know, maybe this is flatter up here, but then maybe this is more kind of curved down here. Because I want, again, I want the light to kind of um, do something a little bit different down here on this plane than I want it to do up there. Maybe I want it to catch more light, you know, up there, but then have it roll as you kind of go around like that. But then you still have this nice cut like that. And then you can do cool things like you can play with the radius of this curve you know, as you go through here. So maybe um, maybe the curve lightens up as you get down further down there, right? But it's more heavy up here, this curve, right? The curve from here over to this. So to add some secondary uh, or some tertiary, um, this is a pauldron for uh, Jagatai Khan of the White Scars Warhammer. Actually, it's, well, technically it's Warhammer 40,000, but <coughs> um, he's mostly Warhammer 30,000, which is uh, Horus Heresy. Maybe this guy. This will live over here, like this. That's starting to feel kind of cool. Uh, can you import ZBrush files on Clip Studio Paint, like uh, in Photoshop? I don't. Uh, are you talking about the, um, like the three D model? I should be a life coach. <laughs> uh, Tony Robbins Bingston. Yeah. 
Thinker. Art. Sculptor. Coach. <laughs> Um, I I don't know if uh, Clip Paint does 3D. I don't know. You know what? I don't know. Maybe maybe it does with uh, Windows 10. I don't really use 3D outside of 3D packages. Not sure. Uh, you're making a statue for a collectible sculpt class. Nice. You mind uh, take a look and tell me what you think of? Sure, Vinny. Go ahead. Um, you can. Um. What I would suggest is the best way to from YouTube. Um, go to my website, Clickerbuilt Studio, and um, there's a form on there under About and Contact. Uh, just send me a DM, or you can put a link in chat. Easier. If you want something a little bit more kind of uh, in depthy. Um, then send it to me. Uh, if not, you could just I can give you a quick Linker Coach Studio. <laughs> um, are you detailing right now or just sketching? I'm kind of just sketching out some of the secondary shapes that I, uh, I want um, to feature in this guy. So uh, all of it is kind of subject to change a bit. But I'm I'm kind of liking the way that it's going right now. Are you using Dynamesh? Um, and do you use Zero Mesh most sculpts and keep them that way? Um, at, for this for for this right now, I'm using Dynamesh uh, for sure. Mostly because uh, I'm trying to uh, figure out what the 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 big shapes are. So um, I'm not in the I'm sold on this and ready to to commit to it. Um, So I'm using Dynamesh. Uh, what I may do is, um, I may start using some Sculptures Pro as I get a little bit further into refining some of these. <coughs> but I would probably once this is, you know, further on to a more final production, uh, then I may copy it, Z remesh it, um, subdivide it a bunch of times, and reproject it on this. So that I can get a little bit more, uh, better, finer details and, and such. Dougie, what's up? <laughs> Apply bacon and texture over it. You, Doug. You. You. Um, some of the things that I'm I'm also trying to do here is um, remember some good core art principles, which is frequency of detail and um, small, medium, and large shapes. So I'm trying to make sure that whatever shapes that I'm doing in here um, have good uh, frequency of detail and small, medium, and large uh, as as I'm going here. So like this one, this one right here m may be better if I use a little bit of um, the Sculptures Pro just to try to get some of these shapes a little bit more, a little bit more better, right? Um, sometimes I'll pot paint in here. Um, there's, there's a lot of times when, um, you know, I'll, I'll go in and just do some color blocking, you know, so like if I'm looking at this guy um, and taking some, you know, some ideas from him, uh, I may go in and be like, okay, let's make this guy red and this guy red, you know, make some gold, make some, you know, some other colors in here just to get some uh, more uh, value blockouts for what the graphic design of that is going to be. Um, so that's... Sometimes I'll, I'll do that, but ultimately this guy will be gray when I print him. So I want to make sure that all of the shapes are reading in the medium that you're going to be creating them in. Um, yeah, but if you know, once once you're ready for print, you you definitely want to 
um, get this down quite a bit uh, in terms of poly count. So I would I would go in and uh, decimate um, a lot of it once once the kind of the final pieces are done. So I I shouldn't worry too much about this back here because it's going to be all covered up. So I want to make sure that most of my work looks good up here. Mm -hmm. I want this to be a little bit more of a kind of a this curvature here and then um, it does more kind of this flat thing down here see if we can get some more interesting reads Uh, technical question: uh, Is there a way to poly paint on low topology mesh the way you paint on high? Uh, no, uh, because the poly paint is vertex paint. So if you have um, something like this, where uh, let's say you are trying to paint, um, let's do RGB. Uh, let's fill it with white real quick. Um, and let's say that you're trying to paint red on here. Um, RGB, RGB. Not painting. Why are you not painting? Um, you're really only able to, um, you know, on the vertex, what you're doing is you're assigning a uh, value to the vertex. <coughs> and there um, it will interpolate the value of this vertex versus the value of this vertex. All right. So if I paint this one, then both of them are red here. But this is white still. So uh, once you subdivide this a bunch of times where there's only a minuscule amount of room in between each vertex then that's when you can actually paint um, a more kind of refined color on there because it's actually your vertexes are closer together uh, so if you don't have a high res um, where you have a lot of vertexes then the poly paint Uh, you sent me an email on the website. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. Um, I'll um, I'll take a look at it uh, probably later today. Hopefully, if I if I have time. Okay, so the thing I'm looking at right here is I've got this big shape. I've got this big shape. This one is a little bit. Uh, the distance from here to here uh, is kind of encroaching a little bit on this and this. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have small, medium, and, and large shapes. So uh, maybe I can actually pull this down just a little bit to make this shape here, this reed here, a little bit um, smaller than this one and this one so that I get a, this kind of nice a better balance of small, medium, and large. Now the other thing I'm looking at is this one, this one, kind of this here. And then if I if I make another one kind of about this size where you have you know this this area as a place of rest, um, then you have like one, two, three, four, and it kind of starts falling apart a little bit. I want to make sure that 
maybe I'll do some more medium shapes in here uh, to kind of break up and make sure that we have small, medium, and large shapes. So those are the, the, the types of things that, that I'm thinking about when I'm kind of just sketching out some things. So we've got this one, this one, and this one. So maybe something like that. And maybe we could put maybe a smaller one here. I want to make sure that I have good breakup of small, medium, and large shapes. Um, have I converted to using C4D? Definitely not. I have not. I'm actually in a bit of a crisis, personal crisis right now, because um, my Maya, my free Maya expired. I don't really have a, th a good core 3D program that I'm using right now. Um, have you tried Blender, though? Um, and I don't really have personal bandwidth right now to learn Maya or to learn um, Blender. So I think I may I may end up just taking a, uh, a course so that I can get another line of the um, <clears throat> Maya student license. I don't definitely don't want to pay for C four D. Sipping on champagne, club and lobster on my yacht. <laughs> no, definitely not. Definitely not. And I wouldn't say I'm that successful yet. This is pretty messy. Fix that up. Uh, do you think it matters if you work with Dynamesh or Subdiv? Uh, which one would you recommend? There's definitely um, the pros and cons to, to both subdivisions uh, and Dynamesh. Dynamesh is great for early work where you don't want to worry about the topology um, and you just want to play with some shapes um, and not worry about the more technical side of, of things. That's really what Dynamesh is good for. Once you've established your kind of your main shapes, um, and you're you're happy with your secondary reads, um, and you're ready to kind of go into tertiary um, tertiary detail land, then uh, that's when Dynamesh kind of falls apart. So that's that's typically when I will switch to a, a subdivision workflow. Um, but I want to make sure that um, my my primary and secondary reads are good first. Maybe what we can do is um, we're going to use uh, some of the Sculptors Pro and just add a little bit more detail in here. Um, right now I'm just using the Smooth tool, the Alt Smooth, uh, and then uh, the brush size uh, that I have is going to dictate how much um, subdivisions are happening in there. So if I need um, a little area to have better subdivisions, I'll just go in and do just an alt smooth. So alt smooth will try to keep your overall shapes um, while... Uh, 
kind of tr trying to make your vertexes more uniform while maintaining a, a curvature. So let me play around with an eyelid in here to see if that. Uh, I think the eyelid works very well. Uh, this is uh, a Mongolian space marine uh, who is uh, is actually called um, Jagatai Khan. He is the master of uh, Primarch, is what they actually call him, um, of his chapter of Space Marines, which are the White Scars. And they're based off of uh, Mongolian um, iconology. He's a Space Golian. The Space Golian. Um, how do you manage the amount of details like alpha and such uh, you put on the models? Will that be uh, on a small scale? So um, frequency of, of details is definitely something to to keep in mind of what your target size is, right? So I, I worked out earlier the, the, the real reason for this project is um, to print. Um, and... This is about the size, so I'm I'm thinking, you know, to the top top of his top knot here, probably about 12 inches, maybe. Um, so, if he's going to live at that size, then I kind of have a better idea of how much detail will um, will work for print that size, right? Because if I was printing this guy at um, 32 millimeter, uh, then a lot of that. Um, a lot of that design wouldn't hold up in that size of a print, but I already decided that, um, you know, he's going to be larger collectible size, something along the lines of this McFarlane, uh, oop, caught up in a wire, something like this McFarlane, um, posable sisters of battle. So something about that size, maybe a little bit bigger, um, but about that size. So then I know, um, the, the frequency of detail that I can get in there that should show up oh, fine in a print. You know? All right, so now I want to make sure that those shapes are reading, right? Because this is this is actually one of the, the bigger pieces uh, uh, that identify him as, as him. Um, so this, his head and top knot, um, this dude with the with the leather kind of overcoats here and then the leg those are the kind of the most important piece <coughs> with a brush of vengeance in his left hand yeah it does look like a, a brush um at the moment uh but it's going to be one of those um halberds modular the fact you that you were that you said that he looks like a primark from the horus heresy Perfect. Uh, if you work on, uh, I don't work in the industry right now professionally. I, um, I am a, a video game character artist. Uh, I work at Crystal Dynamics. Um, that's my day job. Uh, during this early blackout phase, uh, you know, I actually use this trick quite a bit where um, if I have something like this where it's just a, a block out of, of cloth um, and it's a strip, <clears throat> one of the things I, I typically will do is use the dynamic subdivisions and add a thickness to it. Which this one I actually didn't do. So I'm lying to you. Not this one. But these, like this one here, um, it's just a, a single plane, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll apply a certain thickness to it for those types of ones. That way I can, I can move things around pretty easily and it will still maintain that nice thickness. Um, that's the, the general problem with doing things like, 
you know, big pieces like this when you're trying to move pieces around, um, is that you'll end up losing this thickness a little bit the more you move the piece around. So, um, it's typically what I do, but for some reason I didn't do it. <laughs> Um, uh, you send your models out to be printed because the resin spills <laughs> spills on the yacht. <laughs> Shit, I wish I had. Actually, I don't wish I had a yacht. I think um, it's a lot of work to run a yacht. And it's kind of more work than I want to put into it at this point. <laughs> um, question. Yes. Always you can, you can ask questions. Um, Shape, balance, medium, small, etc. Is it something you can learn from some courses? Uh, I often mess with shapes, mostly uh, being driven by intuition, and some knowledge w uh, would be valuable. Yeah, what I what I typically do, um, I don't I don't necessarily find a lot of um, uh, courses that really focus on core art skills like that. You know, when you're talking about you know, uh, rhythm and balance and pattern and repetition and frequency of details, like those, those real core, um, art, art, uh, lessons. I don't find a lot of people touching on that stuff a lot. And I think it's something that's, that's should be taught more. But the thing is, is that that's kind of core art, right? It's like this core art design principles that you really, um, that you really need to nail down, but those can be practiced in almost any medium, right? Whether it's, um, sketching with a pencil or sculpting digitally or, uh, sculpting in clay. Um, all, all of those core art principles, uh, are practicable, um, in different mediums. Um, what I, what I typically say, I, I, well, I say this a lot is that, um, a lot of, a lot of great 3d designers have a very, very strong, uh, background in graphic design because graphic design is like the very basics of utilizing the core art principles to make something appealing, um, just with shapes and colors and values, right? Um, so being able to hone those principles and then bring those principles over to a different medium, you tend to um, get better results because you're not because you have such a strong eye. Um, and those those uh, are definitely very 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 important uh, to to have. Um, a, a lot of this stuff I actually learned. Um, I took a a character painting course or mentorship from. Um, Anthony Jones, who runs a uh, robot pencil. Um, it was more, uh, Photoshop painting and character design course. Um, which I'm, I'm, I'm not a painter. So that course was actually pretty tough for me. <laughs> uh, but I did, I learned a lot of this stuff that I talk about, uh, frequency detail and small, medium, large shapes and pattern and, and all that stuff. A lot of that stuff was, um, I picked up from, from Anthony, um, in his, in his courses. So if you're interested in character design courses in, and such, um, look, look for a robot pencil. Uh, he does absolutely amazing, amazing job. Great teacher, great instructor. Um, highly, um, Highly recommended. But that's what I try to do um, when I'm kind of live streaming and, and doing stuff live is I, I try to reiterate those values as we go uh, and kind of give you a, a look into the active decision making that's happening on you know, why you're doing the things that you're doing at that moment.
So right now I'm just, so I've decided on this, <clears throat> the shape language of most of his stuff will be kind of this kind of organic flowing um, shapes. The, what I really want to do is play off of um, kind of this, this Mongolian kind of Chinese um, like curves that you see a lot uh, in, in the designs of that part of the world, but also the dichotomy between those shapes and what those shapes say uh, versus kind of what the type of person this, this person is, right? He's a big, scary Marine that kills lots of bad guys. But when you look at him, you need to be able to exude what that character is. So I'm purposely making a, this dichotomy between like these rolling shapes that kind of, um, uh, like, explains what a good leader he is so he's approachable he's you know he's uh elegant i think is the word right so if, if you're somebody who's really good at sword play and at battle it's almost like a dance and it, this elegance of of slaughter right but then you have the other side of it which is you know these points and and you know this kind of scary um uh big dude right so it's important to kind of let the shapes of the character explain what type of character he is and have those two kind of back him up. And so once you understand what you want to present as the overall feeling of this, of your, of your character, just from a visual standpoint, then you can start saying, okay, I, now I need to make the des smaller design choices based on the um, themology that you're already saving up for the shape language. So for this guy, it's going to be a lot of curves, um, but also lots of points, right? So it's this kind of back and forth between, you know, not cute and cuddly, but, you know, uh, elegance versus um, uh, brutality. So those are the types of things that I'm, that I'm kind of thinking about. So those... Uh, those shape languages will help drive a lot of these details. You make an animation of beating. Hmm. Uh, was your favorite miniature artist? Who's my favorite miniature artist? Um, right now I've actually been into Arch Villain Games and BCRM. DRM games, yeah. The, between those two, um, I think they have uh, just ridiculously amazing um, sculpts. I feel like this is kind of falling apart a little bit. Really have any kind of See if we can use some of these shapes to break up the um the surface down here. Kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, that's what keeps me going, is being able to give back and, and share. I could do this, I could sit and do this on my own and listen to music and watch a movie and stuff, but um, I really enjoy kind of giving back to the community and, and sharing the knowledge that I have and the experience that I have. Um, 
It means a lot to me, so thanks for being here. Now what I'm trying to do now is play with um, the overall surface, right? So I don't want to just have, you know, this type of frequency of uh, planar breakup, right? Where it's, it's very uniform depth um, and it kind of looks like it's just a pattern that's kind of printed onto uh, one plane. What I really want to do is I want to make sure that uh, there's nice breakup between you know, if you look at it from a side, right, there's not just one major plane. There's like all these kind of like bigger shapes um, that are breaking up the overall um, plane that it's sitting on. So maybe instead of just having kind of this one dent through here, let's turn this guy off. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll just knock, knock this down a little bit. So it's more of this, a plane change, not just a plane change, but like, you know, you have this, this curvature and then it kind of goes into a different curvature here, you know? And what I'm doing is I'm thinking about how the light is going to roll over um, these areas. So now instead of like this, this you know, tight um, highlight here and then um, a low light or a shadow and then another tight highlight and then, you know, just a plane, now we have this highlight here has been extended quite a bit and... It lives much differently now. So those are the types of things that I'm I'm trying to think about while I'm while I'm doing this. All right, and that's another thing uh, why you add, you know, a little bit of curvature through these types of things so the the light actually plays differently over those pieces. All right, so maybe it goes curve, maybe flattens out a little bit and then does more curve down here. That feels like it would be kind of cool. All right, so now we have like this, this like flat feeling and then it comes down into here and has this, this nice kind of curve flowy feeling. I don't know how to get okay sorry about that uh youtube chatters um are you sculpting in symmetry but in pose um yeah for, for right now what i did was i took and moved um this guy into um a more um z symmetry but what the uh, what the actual one is doing is is this. I think. I don't know. Maybe I messed it up. No, this one. This one. There we go. That's what the actual one will be doing. So when I get um, when I get this one sculpted up, I'll just rotate it back into that position. I think I can block. Aha! Get out of here. Get out of here, bot. Sorry about that, guys. 
All right, so let's go back to this guy. Maybe we can get some more breakup happening down here. Yes, this is Khan. This is Jagatai. Jagatai Khan. Yep, from four from forty K. Thirty K technically, but yeah. We don't know where he's at at the moment in forty K. Or do we? I, don't know, I haven't been <coughs> keeping up with the uh, forty side of um of things. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, a uh, bestiarum. Let me uh, let me get the let me get the website. Uh, the second one is bestiarum. Games, arch villain games, and bestiarum games. Those are the two. Those are the two um, mini uh, companies that I'm that I'm really digging right now. Thanks, Kimmy. So yeah, I want to make sure that I kind of break up this bottom just a little bit and give a little bit more interesting um, life to it because I feel like it. It's kind of feels kind of chopped off. Uh, aren't what on Patreon? The Bestiarum and Archvillain? Yes, they are. That is correct. Um, the, other th the other thing I do sometimes when I get to a point like this uh, and I want to kind of just clean things up, sometimes I'll go through with clay polish and just do a quick standard uh, clay polish and that will that will just give me a quick um, cleaned up version of what I already have just to see what those shapes will feel like cleaned up <coughs> uh, and then maybe I'll just undo that um, and that gives me um, a, an idea of you know if I go and clean this stuff up this is what it's going to look like All right, let's see if we can get some of this, this going now. Uh, how much time to, do you work uh, in a statue like this from block out to finish? Um, it's, it's quite a feat, man. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work, especially for kind of the bigger, the bigger ones with lots of detail. Um, I could see putting in many weeks of work on it. Um, but for me, most of, most of the work that I'm doing on these guys are all just during stream. Uh, and I only stream a couple of times uh, a month. So unfortunately that just means that either I do some of this, um, outside of streams or, uh, I work on these projects for quite a while. <laughs> But it, it it takes quite a bit, quite a bit of work. Uh, you're modeling to scale or re resize it later? Uh, I'm... For print, um, this is about the size that I want it for print. Um, it, it's just, you know, 20 sided die down here. Just give you a, a basic idea of about how big I want to do it. But once I get closer to um, ready to print it, um, I'll resize everything accordingly. That's feeling kind of cool. Kind of looks like a chicken, though. <laughs> That's okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, 
<laughs> Fun question. In a zombie apocalypse, the three D artists die first or do they survive? Um I think there's a lot that goes into that. If it's just, you know, the beginning, um, and you're kind of trying to figure out uh what's going on in the world, um I think we would survive fairly well because we catch on to things quickly. Um we use a lot of common sense uh and logic. And I feel like those are really important traits to have early on in the zombie apocalypse. However, that said, later when things have calmed down a little bit, you kind of get to this whole like, okay, what do you do? What are you good at? What kind of like life skills do you have? Um, you know, oh, I'm a cook, or I'm a carpenter, or I can build things, or I I fix electric things. Um, I feel like as an artist, you know, will probably be a little bit m more uh, volunteered for guard duty. <laughs> so later on in the apocalypse, I don't think I don't think our skill set will uh, will give much. Uh, to the survival of of the human species, but um, if we do make it through and we get to a point where um, we're starting to rebuild society, then I think artists have a really um, a good chance. But I think there's that middle time in there uh, that um, that it could get kind of hairy for artists. No need. <laughs> I'll try to break up the. It feels a little cool. That feels cool. All right, cool. I think we're getting somewhere. I think we're getting somewhere. This, I mean, honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. But honestly, I think it's important to know your strengths and weaknesses when you're an artist. And I know one of my weaknesses is. Uh, tertiary detail, like coming up with tertiary detail. I suck at that part. Like this part in here, I actually, I'm, I've been, I'm really good at block out and I'm good at kind of finalizing details. Um, but when it comes to like filling in areas with ideas of, you know, smaller secondary details, I, I kind of suck at that and I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> um, that's kind of when concepts really, uh, really help me. Uh, but when I don't really have a, a concept and I'm trying to kind of do my own thing, um, this is the part that I struggle with quite a bit. And I think it's okay to admit those types of things to yourself. Because once you do, once you realize that that's where you need help, then you know what to practice. Sup, sup, wheeling. Sup, sup. All right, let's do a quick clay polish and see what that looks like. Uh, let's do a quick mirror and weld. Oop, uh, let's turn off local symmetry. Do mirror and weld. Just move this over here. You can get an idea of what this looks like. Uh, let's turn off symmetry.
There we go. That's feeling cool. I like those shapes. Okay. I think that's... I think that's... Not quite ready. We need to do a little bit more down here and a little bit more in the eye. But the overall... Overall read feels pretty cool. We got this nice kind of big flat plane. And then we got some small kind of medium and large shapes in there. Maybe a couple of smaller shapes in here would probably be better. I usually admit to myself, weakness to myself in a particular aisle of the grocery store. Is that the bacon aisle? Dougie? <laughs> Um, may also increase contrast through deformation palette and um, what do studios look for in a portfolio? Sorry, I missed that one, Ajax. Um, and or a sample to obtain sculpting gear. Um, what does a studio look for in a portfolio? Um, I think that um, that really depends on the job that you're going for. Um, if you're going for, you know, a, a miniature artist, um, then, uh, having, having good sculpts is, I think is probably the, the biggest thing. <coughs> if you're going for, um, a character artist for video game, uh, production, um, I, those are the things that I can, I feel like I can, I can talk to. Uh, for video for video game production, it really is um, showing that you can do the job. So uh, having breakdown images of of uh, of your work, um, showing uh, how you're lighting it, how you're sculpting it, um, how you're baking it, how you're basically the whole the whole kit and caboodle for how you constructed the thing. That's really what you have to uh answer as as a candidate and that kind of goes for for any job that you're applying for is does my work show that i can do the job that i'm applying for um and i think that's really important for for any portfolio so if you're going for an environment you need to show that you know what you're doing uh, as an environment artist. So answer the questions that you think that they would want uh, you to be able to do, right? Um, that's the ultimate thing, is show them that you can do the, 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 the job. And then if that's for minis, then show uh, that you can, what are the most things about, you know, what do you feel like the most important things are for somebody that you would try to hire as a miniature artist? I think the most important thing is how are your sculpts? Do they, do the shapes read? Do they, um, you know, do they, do they get across a concept? How well can you, can you follow a concept? Um, and then, you know, how is your, how is your keying? How is your actual production work? Um, those types of things, right? Because those are, those are the things that you need to be able to do in order to do the job. Um, have you ever experienced other people uh, stealing or claiming that is their artwork? If you have, what is your response? Um, I fortunately have not um, have not had to experience that yet. Um, but I think that um, you know, if it if it does happen to me, um, you know, making sure that I can prove that it's mine uh, before I make any kind of claims. Uh, is probably the the biggest thing. Definitively, no questions asked. 
can I prove that it's mine? If so, then, you know, you approach the company or you approach the person first, and then if that doesn't work, then um, shame on them and um, tell all your um, art station buddies and all of your Facebook buddies, and then we can all help shame them as well. <laughs> okay, I need more smaller details in here. So some more. Right now, we've got the things that, that read the most are this, 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 and a little bit of this, right? And they all feel a little too close to the same size shapes. The thing, what I'll do is I'll take this area down here and actually split it up into smaller frequency details. See what that feels like. And I could test that real quick just to see. Something like that. I don't really like that design, but something like that where it needs to have some more smaller detail. What's up, yo base? Uh, thanks, man. Uh, do I have any tutorials out anywhere? I only have one tutorial right now, uh, and that's how to sculpt hands. Uh, you can find that on... Um, Cube brush, cube brush, um, on that website under just under my name, um, or on Gumroad. That's those are the only ones that I have for the moment. Um, I got some other plans, kind of in the background, uh, but uh, I got a lot of things kind of burning in the background. So who knows if I'll actually get to them? Um, I do actually. You know what? I have a um, I have a torso anatomy uh, video that I did on my YouTube. If you want to find that one. I'm trying to find out. But good. Back. Block. All right, sorry about that, YouTube people. Jerk bot in the chat. Maybe what I can do is do some ins and outs. Uh, you don't understand how you and other artists get such great results from the damn standard. Um, <laughs> no, Dougie. Uh, it's... Damn standard is um it's you get the best results out of damn standard when you take it nice and slow. Um and and use uh your your brush size uh, is really important. So if you want to get nice kind of tight 
controlled um, pieces in here, right? And just take it nice and easy. You know, something like that. Or um, in this in this case here, I really wanted to do kind of a, a big plane change. Uh, so then um, you just take it nice and slow, and maybe just press nice and softly like this. And then if you want something bigger, press a little bit harder. I would say the biggest thing with damn standards is take it slow. The faster you go, the kind of more gross it gets. <clears throat> uh, would you turn on AccuCurve for Deeming Standard or other features? I just use it just regularly. Um, I don't use I don't use AccuCurve. You could, um, but I don't. I don't think you do. I think it's it's a little bit more about um, your your actual drawing control. And um, if you want to get nice smooth lines, use your um, use your lazy mouse. Very very helpful. Again, just take it nice and slow. Yeah. We'll break up some of these edges a little bit here. Maybe we'll get a little bit more curvature on this guy, this plane here. You know, want to be a little bit careful because now this size here is very similar to this size and this size and this size and this size. Maybe I can actually break this up a little bit and do like another little curly Q in here. So now it kind of, it breaks up this, this big, uh, open plane yeah that feels better then maybe what we can do is just just fade this off And we can actually use the um, Sculptors Pro here. We can get a little extra topology in there. And light, and then pushing a little bit harder. And then you can just go through with a move brush and just adjust it. Fix some of those curves if you want to. You know, if you have like this distance, this distance, and this distance all feel similar, then you can use maybe use your brush and make one of those a little bit bigger. So you have a nice little small, medium, and large shape offset. Make it feel a little bit more dynamic in there. Oh, it makes the weird divots. Yeah, if you go f if you go fast um, with 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 Dynamesh, it makes it makes the weird divots. Uh, there's a lot of times when it does, like when you're 
course, now it's not doing it. Now it's not doing it at all. Sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it does. Um, but uh, the thing that you could do if it, if you find it making divots is just slow down the pace of your of your um, brush stroke a little bit. Or you can try switching it to freehand instead of uh, dots. Will I project those details later? <clears throat> yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, then if I if I if I want to add a little bit more details in there, I can just use my Sculptors Pro and go in and kind of retrace these a little bit. Because then what it will do is it will it will re-topologize those and give me a little bit better details, right? And so instead, I can just come in and clean those up a little bit. Um, the thing with Sculptures Pro is you want to be careful at how big your, the, the sub tool that you're working currently on. If you're, if, if I'm trying to do Sculptures Pro on something like this, right, that, um, that is maybe 2 million polygons, but it's very big, um, that, uh, it has to recalculate every single frame, uh, when you're trying to draw. So you'll get a performance hit depending on the size of the um, of the subtool that you're on, whether it's the amount of um, the amount of polygons it already has or the size of it in, uh, in general. I'm gonna have to clean this up a little bit and do some more work back here, but as long as they have the general idea here, I think we should be okay. This kind of feels cool as it like kind of swings up, pulls back in here like this. Uh, maybe, maybe not the size so much uh, as um, the it's definitely how many polygons are on the subtool is is the big one um but if, if it takes up a lot of space i think that actually does um affect the performance of it as, as well too uh so what i would do is um you know if you get to a point where it's just not really working that well um what I would do is just maybe come in with uh, <clears throat> like your smooth tool and then just smooth out an area to add a little bit more geo to it. You know, smooth it out a little bit and just do like a, a once over kind of like this for like the whole area that you want to sculpt and then turn off Sculptors Pro and then maybe just use your regular tools in here. That's another uh, way I get around uh, some of those performance issues when um, you have a, a big model and it's it's kind of creating gross things. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's typically what I'll do. Too. I really like the idea of having these shapes kind of break the silhouette there and and really define some of those those breakups.
it's another thing that I could try to use too is is the this kind of yeah <coughs> one side of one side of the curve is is con uh convex and the other side is concave that might be kind of cool too uh let's do add maybe maybe this side kind of comes in and again while i'm while i'm starting to work on the first little area of um smaller secondary shapes and kind of trying to figure out the whole formology um, and um, the idea of what forms this guy is going to, to carry throughout his character. Uh, I, I try to play with a lot of different ideas um, in these, like the, in the, in the first throws of this part of, of um, the creation process. So, if I can establish some cool shape relationships and shapeology uh, early on, then I can. <coughs> oh man, excuse me. I can use those things to repeat across uh, the rest of the character to really dial in um, kind of the the overall connection of all the design elements. Uh, if you provided a link to a JPEG, could you point out uh, quickly what I should change and where my errors most work? Um, if you if you want to send me some stuff, you can. Um, just uh, shoot me a, a DM. Um, I think I only have about 10 minutes left of my stream here today, so I don't really have time to do it on stream. But if you would like to uh, DM me some stuff, I can see if I can find some time to give you a little bit of feedback if you'd like. So I'm planning on um, doing some more kind of like filigree stuff um, in other parts of his armor. So uh, down on his leg, uh, especially his knee, you know, uh, a lot in here, maybe even some, some stuff in here. So there'll, it'll definitely be more filigree stuff. Um, so the, the things that I'm doing now uh, should complement the filigree stuff that I'm planning on doing other ways. And the the form language that I'm using here should support that. Which this does, this form language does. So we should have those playing quite nicely off each other. I'm just going to start kind of cleaning up some of these little areas in here. Move tool is, is a giant help in this, this part where you just need to go in and kind of clean up some of the curves and stuff. Um, what would you recommend me to change for anatomy study? I've been spending hours on it, but it feels like it's not working and I'm not sure where there are many different books. Um, 
I think one of the important things uh, to keep in mind when you're studying anatomy uh, is that you really need to have uh, someone who can give you feedback, like, like an instructor or somebody, um, somebody in the industry who um, is 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 good at it. Or you know you you have a, a group of um, of people in you know a Discord or um, some kind of group where you can get you know good feedback i think that's really Im important in the times when you're trying to um kind of hone your your foundations in your craft um because if you don't uh, a lot of times you can just continue to make the same mistakes over and over again without realizing it and then if you make the same mistakes over and over and over again and nobody corrects you then Either that becomes your style <laughs> or it's something that you fight for a long time because your hands just know how to make those shapes. Your mind just needs the need, uh, knows how to make those shapes that way. So I think it's important to have um, <coughs> uh, a group of people or you know people that you can get good feedback from. That's what I did early on in, in my career when I was working on getting better and working on my core skills is um, I made sure to do a lot of work in, in like competitions and, or in groups so that other people's eyes can be on your work um, because it's, it's so important. Even, even at a professional level, um, you know, my art director on a daily basis will come in and be like, Oh, let's change this and this and this. I'm like, Oh my God, you're totally right. You know? Um, so even just practicing getting feedback from other people, uh, is super important. I think there's also an art to receiving critiques <laughs> that, uh, that, you really need to have as well. <laughs> you always assume criticism is just jealousy. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, got a few more minutes until we wrap up. So if you guys have any questions that you were kind of waiting for, now's the time to get those in. Um, I probably will be continuing this on my personal Twitch channel. So if you'd like to follow me on my personal Twitch channel, it's just Brendan Isaiah Bankston. Let me spell that for you. Here, uh, Twitch. So there's my Twitch channel. If you would like to follow me on my Twitch channel, um, I probably will be doing more stuff over there. Um, I've got some other things that I've got in the works as well. Uh, so I, I probably will be working on uh, this guy and getting him ready for production and, fin uh, and doing final details on this guy. Um, so I'll probably do that over on my personal channel. Um, I will probably be working on <coughs> all some alternate poses for this guy um over there as well um and i actually let me actually load this other project up that um, i was actually working on before yo what's up voxel how you doing you got here just in time just in time for the end um see this demon general from uh, Bjorn Heary. Not this one, but the one that's loading. That'll be up in a second. So this is, um, this is one from Bjorn Heary that I was working on, uh, for a little bit before this. I was actually working on it for, uh, video game character production, uh, but I think I'm going to switch to, 
a posed um, collectible sculpt instead because uh, I would like to actually make this into that and print it out. Because that would be dope. And then paint it. Dude. How dope would that be? Anyways. Um, so that's, that's something else I'm, I'm going to be working on, um, on on my channel. And this probably will be next. Uh, probably will come back to her after I finish, um, after I finish Jagged Tie. You're doing a multi-part kit yourself? What? Voice, 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 voice. Yeah. Um, if you want to check out our our website as well, um, www.clinkerbuiltstudio. Studio. I can spell studio. Clinkerbuilt Studio. Um, uh, I am planning on. Uh, doing this as a free giveaway for uh, as an STL. So if you're interested in getting this guy eventually, once I finish him, um, just sign up for our newsletter on Clinkerbuilt Studio. It's under contacts and communication con the contact page. Uh, just sign up for our newsletter, and uh, we'll put you on a list. Once once it's ready, we'll send out a Are you interested in having this STL? Um, then you can, yes, I'm interested. Send it to me, Rah. just like that. Um, but that's if uh, that that will be going out to people who are on our um, newsletter. So if you would like to do that, please do. Um, let's see what else. <coughs> um, we do have an Etsy store um, for painted for Warhammer models uh, that we do have some stuff on sale. So. Um, if you would like to be an owner of some of the paints, paint jobs that we've done, this is just, look, it's actually real. It's a thing. Yeah. Uh, but we have a bunch of models up on our Etsy store. Uh, if you would like to add some of those to your collections, got some fun stuff there and some fun stuff coming up, uh, for paint jobs. Lots of, lots of fun stuff. Uh, what else, what else am I working on? That's about it. All right. I think that's it. All right. Um, that's it for today. Uh, I'm trying to work on my schedule for uh, this stream for next month. So uh, I may be on or I may be not. But I for sure will be on doing some stuff on my, on my uh, Twitch channel. So follow me there if you would like to do that. And I uh, hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys learned a few things but most of all i hope you were inspired to go make your own cool stuff get out there and you go make some cool stuff brendan said so do it do it all right guys thanks uh thanks a lot for hanging out and we will see you very soon later